You say, well, how? He gave him in a dream the strategy. You'll find that in the book of Genesis. Uh, Joseph is in Genesis 41 and Jacob is in uh, Genesis 30. He Remember how God told him uh, about the, what do they call it? The spotted ones, the speckled ones, the ring-striped ones. He told him, he said, put this into the water or put this you know, up for them to see. Because the covenant was, the last covenant with Laban was, and see, Laban thought he was slick, but you cannot slick God. Come on. And this is in business. Jacob ain't in no church. But God gave him a strategy. And Laban said, okay, if, if you take all of the speckle, or the spotted ones, the ones that are not pure, if you will, he said, okay, that'll be your wage, thinking, he, he maybe go off with one or two, one or two. Well, God had it to where all of them turned that way from drinking in that water. All of them turned. And when Jacob went out, he took everything that Laban had, including the daughters, you know, which were his wives, you know, all of his lambs, his cattle, his everything he went out with. Everything he went out with, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, at a certain time, God says to the wicked, that's enough. But then he tries to instruct his people. If his people won't listen to him, he's, he's not able to prosper them. That's why we're in this training part right now. With Joseph, he gave him the ability, because uh, with the dream, to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Because remember, Joseph said, it's not in me to know, but I know where to get it from. And he began to tell Pharaoh what the dream was. And God gave him a strategy. And the strategy was not spend everything you have. This is what I call the Joseph principle. You put 10% 10 aside for God. You pay, and all of the financial planners will tell you the same thing to well, most of them. They won't tell you 10% for God. But they say pay yourself first. Pay yourself off the top, off the top. But see, we say, Joseph said, you pay God first, then you put, pay yourself first, meaning put that in a storehouse. Why do you think God said, I'll command a blessing upon your storehouse? Okay, I'm, I'm crying by the Holy Spirit. If you do not have a storehouse right now, which is a savings account, you better go get one. And you need to make a plan to take something off the top and store it. Something off the first, tenth, say, is for God. No, don't say, it is for God. Then you pay yourself. And then you live off of the 80% as God will allow you. If you have to downsize, then you do it. We don't take God's tithe, or that is not the principle of God. That is not the principle of God. But see, Joseph got a strategy from God for Pharaoh. But it wasn't just for Pharaoh, because God wanted to save his posterity, the house of Jacob, Israel. And, but in the process, Egypt was saved. All the countries around were saved because of Joseph. And see, our mentality today is we don't want to save nothing. We don't want to put nothing aside. We want to consume everything. If Joseph had allowed them to consume in the seven years of plenty, they all would have died out during the famine. I keep hearing in my ear going, ain't nobody got time for all of that. And he took it off the top. If you're waiting to, to honor God or to save and you're waiting for fragments to be left over, I can tell you that ain't happening. Amen. There will never be any leftover. You, you know how uh, so often the financial planners tell you uh, just have automatic, whatever you call that, uh, Withdrawal. withdrawals. Even if it's a $5, y'all, and you go, what's $5 going to do for me? You'll have $20, $30 at the end of the month where you had zero before. We cannot keep eating all of our seed. I'm not saying the tithe. You better put the tithe over there or it's all going to be corrupt. It's just all going to be corrupt. 
But then if you eat all of your seed, if you eat all of the 90%, when God is trying to get you in the flow, then you'll be the first to be down here praying. And I'll pray for you in a minute. And so will pastor. So will pastor. But there, the, at some point, the alcoholic has to stop drinking. The smoker has to stop smoking or the same cancer he was delivered from, that same heart disease he was delivered from, yeah. is going to come back. Because you don't live by miracles. You live by principles. Oh, God help. Help me. The time for the church having morality without influence, the Spirit of the Lord said, that's over. That's over. We, we, we have morality within the church, but because we don't have enough money, we don't have influence. When you got money, money talks. Money talks. In Ecclesiastes, what does it say? Money, what? Answers. answers all things. I don't know if it answers all things, but it answers, and it answers a whole lot of them. There are people dying today of simple little things that we take for granted because they don't have money. They don't have money to eat right. They don't have money to get uh, the nutrition that they need uh, or the sleep that they need because they're working three and four jobs. We got people in the church that because they won't tithe are working two jobs because they won't honor God. They're trying to make their own increase come to, and they're killing themselves in the process. Killing themselves in the process. What did Yeshua say? Bring it to me. I will give you rest. I'm not going to put more toil on you. When we come to this table, he came for us financially as well, y'all. He bled for us. And you say, well, how did, how did he? He bought our prosperity. That is part of our salvation. That's part of the wholeness, the shalem, hope that nothing missing. Nothing broken. He paid for it all. And you said, what? In Genesis, the curse was to sweat from your brow all the days of your life, and the earth would be like, like thistles and thorns. Well, those thistles and thorns came upon his brow, and he sweat his blood so that you didn't have to toil by the sweat of your brow anymore. Thank you. Yeah. Not that you didn't have to work, but you didn't have to toil Kill yourself. Because you. even in the New Covenant in Ephesians, it says a, a man needs to work so that a man, woman, people need to work so that they have something to give. Because unless you have something to give, it, it, you can't get in the cycle. That's why the scripture talks about the widow women all of the time. And in Yeshua's day, even the, the widow, she threw in what she had, the pennies, the widow's might. In the old covenant, covenant, you have Elijah's widow, who was a Gentile, but you have Elisha's widow, who was, was of the covenant. She was Jewish. She was of the covenant. And when Elisha came to that widow woman, her husband had died and left her in debt. Her husband was the, in the son of the prophet school, Samuel's school. So she was servant of God, if you will. But see, because oh, not always by our own mistakes, I, I know that's because my dad left my mother in debt because of some of his mistakes in his life that she knew nothing about. But then she was left as a widow bearing the burden of that taxation. But see, Elisha said, what do you have in the house? And the Spirit of the Lord is saying today, what do you have in the house? Not just in your physical house that you can use for seed, but in your house. What do you have in your house? What talent? What word? What? Because that's a seed too. But he asked her, what do you have? And she said, I just have this little cruise of oil. And you all know the story. He said, go and get the vessels. And he spoke a prophetic blessing. And the scripture says that as long as she poured, as long as there were vessels, it, it kept, the, the oil kept coming. Now that was a supernatural. But then what did the prophet tell her? 
He said, take the oil, all that oil, because you said, well, she couldn't eat the oil. He said, take the oil, sell it, pay your debt, and then live off the rest. But see, we've got to bring what we do have, whether it's talent, substance, words, whatever, because sometimes we bring our talent and our substance, but our word is against us. And where the word of a king is, that's a decree. Okay, Father, help. So we need not only power, but we need wisdom, okay? Even um, in the book of Acts, in Acts 6 and 33, uh, when they were choosing deacons in the church, the deacons had to be full, and you go, oh, no, not the deacons. And in today's church, the deacons are mostly kings. They operate mostly as kings, because usually the deacons are businessmen. Is that true? I mean, usually. They don't have no priesthood in them, most of them. That's why they could say the things to pastor that they said, because they, they said, this doesn't have anything to do with ministry, it's business. Well, ministry has everything to do with business for a child of God. And in the book of Acts, it said, pick you out me for deacons, men full of wisdom and spirit led. Not just I'm, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. Everybody in here is baptized in the Holy Ghost. But are you spirit led? Okay. That was for the office of the deacon. Amen. Okay. So see, they were operating in Melchizedek priesthood. Because they said, you don't put no shabby people over the business of the, the church. They didn't just go out and get a tax collector and say, okay, you come and do. <laughs> That's crazy. Over the house of God? No. Okay. Um, okay. Whatever number this is, I don't know. Um, four. Three, four. four. Okay. Number four in, in all of this, if you need help, you better cry help. We need to put aside our pride. We need, need to put aside and come to the Lord's table, house, man, and say, help, help. This morning, the Holy Ghost was saying to me, he, uh, he said, I, Yeshua was saying, he said, I didn't leave you comfortless. I didn't leave you without a helper. I did not leave you alone. So many of us, especially single women, you say, well, I'm alone. You are not alone a day in your life if you're in the kingdom of God. Amen. You have been, and that goes for the men too. You say, well, we got, we got to bear all this burden of, of provision for, for our house and that you are not alone in your bearing. Amen. You have a helper if you will put aside uh, pride, insecurity, and say, help. For weeks I've been saying to pastor, sing that song. I look to the hills. Whence cometh my help? Not well, I, don't, I need help with finances. Yes, I do. But that's not what I was looking for. <laughs> and the scripture said, my help come. I look up there, but the hills are not bringing me nothing. My help cometh from the Lord. Amen. And you're not going to find him down here. Amen. It's up. It's up. And you, you say, what, I don't need help. We need help for all kinds of things. And Pastor was talking about them in the prayer, if y'all were even listening to the prayer this morning. Because y'all, when people pray, our response, if we agree with that, should be amen. 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 Because that in Hebrew means, so let it be done unto me. We are agreeing with our mouth with what God is saying. Okay, so if we need help, the scripture said, ask, seek, knock. You need help getting out of debt? Do you need help trusting God? Do you need help? I need help with all of the above. Do you need help with your spending? Ain't nobody got time for all that. God helped me when he was helping me get out of debt. He also tutored me on my spending. And a lot of us have different, we have different reasons for our spending habits. Different reasons. Some of them are insecurity. 
Some of them are pride. Because he said, what do you need an address for? What do you need that for? He said, when you need one, I'll give you one. You know, and he goes, you can go shopping if you want to, but I would never find anything. To this day, I can still ne never find anything. You know, and then I'll go, well, I really didn't need it anyway. And I go in my closet and I make some other kind of thing. There are many in the body of Christ around the world that don't have that option. To go to their closet and choose something else. Amen. They don't have that option. But see, he can teach us about our spending habits and go, no, no, baby, you don't, you don't need to do that. And you say, well, he'll surprise all. But he's trying to get you out of debt and he's trying to teach you to profit. Once he teaches you to profit, then you can do all the other stuff. But we just want to, the minute the check comes in, we're going, woohoo, the bonus check. Congratulations on the bonus check. But see, there, there is something that Proverbs teaches you. The Joseph Princip, all the Word of God teaches you. And this is under address your belief system. Proverbs teaches us wise investments. It also teaches us allocation. Do you all know what that means? Allocation, where the money goes. And I wrote down here, you tell the money where to go. The money doesn't tell you. Well, I can only do this. Who says you can only do that? You let money tell you? Your money is not your God. You are over money. That's what allocation means. And all that takes is one decision. That first 10% goes to God. There is no conversation about that. Don't talk to me about that. Amen. Bills, you can talk all you want. Don't talk to me about the 10%. Okay? And even after the 10 and the 10 and the 80, you still have to be open to what does God say allocation-wise? What does God say? Because he'll teach you, y'all. Um, and another thing Proverbs teaches you is...